Hello, my name is Dr. Luke Miller, and I'm working with Dr. Christopher Skopoulos to uh, bring you this video about liver ultrasound exam with the Butterfly IQ. So the liver ultrasound exam is obviously very important clinically, and there's a lot of uh, in impressive information that we can get from it. So we're just gonna talk about a few of the basic things that you're looking for with liver ultrasound exam and why they're clinically relevant. So as always, we begin with proper positioning of the probe. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the proper views so that you can see what you wanna see. So this lovely little anatomical diagram here shows you the kind of views that you're going for. So one approach is going subcostal, so it's below the rib cage, as in this photo right here. And there you're gonna be able to see gallbladder and, and usually the left side of the liver a little bit better. If you want to see the deep right side of the liver though, usually you have to go in between the ribs over here, right here. You can also get good views of the rest of the liver from here because then you don't have to compete with bowel gas like you do with the subcostal view. But here you're going in between the ribs, so it can be a little challenging because you've got to be able to find uh, that, that cozy place right in there where the ribs aren't blocking your view. Here's some anatomical diagrams that are showing us or what the views look like on cross-section. It's right here at the front of the abdomen. You're able to image this area really well. And then from this side, you're able to image this area really well. All right, so what kind of things are we looking for when we're imaging the liver with ultrasound? So one major thing we're looking at is echogenicity. And echogenicity just means how bright or how white the, the part of the image is. If it's echogenic, uh, it's going to be very bright and white. If it's not echogenic, uh, if you're calling it decreased echogenicity, that means that it's dark or even shadowed uh, on, on your image. So the liver is going to appear more echogenic or brighter than the parenchyma of the right kidney. So the kidney can be a very convenient comparison for you, and it's something that every ultrasound should look at. The next thing is, is that you want to make sure that you've got kind of a uniform structure of echogenicity, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means. If that's not the case, it can indicate a fatty liver or a cirrhosis. You also want to look at the smoothness of the liver capsule. It should be nice and smooth. If it's not, that can indicate uh, underlying distortions in liver architecture that can happen with the scarring. And then you want to be able to look at the liver vasculature. So that includes looking at hepatic veins, arteries, and the portal vein, and being able to distinguish those and take some measurements of, of their characteristics. And then finally, you should always be looking at the gallbladder and seeing if there's any abnormalities there. And then just kind of on the gross scale, you're looking for any major masses, cysts, scar tissue, calcifications, or uh, large effusions uh, anywhere around the liver. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about those uh, more in detail with images. So first, we're looking here at the echogenicity and comparing it to the right kidney. So uh, as you can see, the, the kidney is here. Um, it's kind of this dark ring around this, this lighter echogenic core. So the parenchyma has less echogenicity than the liver. The liver is here. And the more ultrasound you do, you'll come to kind of recognize this characteristic architecture of the liver these little kind of holes that you'll see uh, in this kind of granular background field. And once you recognize that kind of consistency, there's another, no other organ that really looks quite like it. And so it can be really helpful uh, to be able to recognize where the liver is and, and always know exactly what you're looking at. And there's the kidney again. So as you can see, the liver looks lighter than the parenchyma of the kidney or this dark ring around the kidney. And that's as it should be. There's the video there, kidney being pushed more into view. There's an even better view of the, the normal liver architecture. That's what it should look like. All right, so the next thing you're looking for is kind of a uniform structure of echogenicity. And what does that mean? It doesn't necessarily mean that the liver will look completely uh, consistent at all or all throughout, but it does mean that you'll have kind of a normal uh, shading from the top of the image here, close to your probe, which is here and down here, so it'd be kind of a smooth uh, transition. You'll, you'll still see some shading down here just because uh, you know, some of the, the sound waves are being bounced back. And you know, there's, there's some ultrasound settings you can do to reduce this kind of shadowing. 
But the bottom line is if you have a very echogenic or fatty liver, a lot of the fat and scar tissue up here are going to be very echogenic. It's going to be blocking a lot of the sound up here from reaching down here. So you see a very sharp drop off. You'll see some very bright liver tissue up here from all the echoes. And this wall will be covered in shadow because the liver is more dense than normal, and more echogenic. All right. So the next thing you're looking for is the liver capsule. So as you can see here, this very echogenic line right here that's surrounding the liver tissue, that's the liver capsule. It's nice and smooth. That's what we want to see. Whereas in cirrhosis, you know, it'll be a lot more wavy and bumpy. Here's the liver parenchyma again, the kidney here. The other thing that you can look for is effusions. So if you have a pulmonary effusion, you'd actually see a dark fluid collection here because uh, that's it's a diaphragmatic recess. So a lot of fluid will collect right here next to the liver. And so you can catch some of that kind of stuff incidentally. You could also see uh, fluids inside the capsule uh, here if you have maybe a, a liver hematoma or abscess. And that would be an important thing to be able to recognize as well. All right, so now let's talk about imaging hepatic vasculature. So probably the easiest vessel to identify, I think, is the hepatic veins. So typically they come in three. So there's three major branches here, as you can see, that are about to come into view, and there they are. One, two, three. The other helpful thing about them is, is that they're always traveling away from the transducer. So that means that they show up blue on color Doppler. because so they're moving down away from the transducer here. So it's a little odd for any of those astronomers out there because you're probably used to blue meaning it's moving you know the blue doppler effect for light actually means that the light's moving towards you but for whatever reason with ultrasound the convention is the opposite of astronomy so blue is moving away from the probe while red is moving toward it and the more intense that color is the faster it's moving away or the more intense red it is the faster it's moving toward the transducer so the other thing to notice with these hepatic veins is that they don't have a very thick wall. So as you can see, there's almost no wall there. It's just kind of dark because they don't really need one. They're fairly low pressure. They're just carrying away blood from the hepatic tissue. And so they don't need, uh, they don't need a lot of pressure. They're like veins in the other parts of the body, more like a reservoir uh, than some other parts of the hepatic vasculature. So the now we'll show you the portal vein, because so it's a bit different. So the portal vein is actually traveling the opposite direction of the hepatic veins. So it's going to show up as red, because it's moving toward the transducer, typically. And the other thing with the portal vein is that it has very thick walls. You can see kind of these, these uh, echogenic or very whitish structures. That's the thick wall of the portal vein. And the wall of the portal vein actually needs to be thicker, because it serves a different purpose than most veins. It's carrying a lot of nutrients and it's so higher pressure because it's coming out of uh, the intestines and it's bringing all that into the liver. So it's gonna appear differently than the hepatic veins for that reason. So it could be easy to distinguish. So here you have go, there's quite a bit of flow here. It's that consistent red, high volume flow through kind of these uh, thick walled veins, that's the portal vein, all right? And it will also have three branches that you can identify here, here, and going off in that direction. Right, And if uh, the portal vein is having flow that's going in the wrong direction or it's sluggish or you're seeing things like that, you know, that can be indicative of portal hypertension. So that's, a, that's an important pathological finding to be able to recognize. So now the hardest one to identify is probably the hepatic artery because it, it just works very differently than the veins. It's much smaller, so it's, its diameter is maybe three to four millimeters, whereas the portal vein is one to two centimeters, so much smaller. Uh, the hepatic artery is a much smaller vessel. And it's gonna have similar dynamics to other arteries in the body where the pressure is rising and falling quite quickly with uh, the, the beat of the heart, right? And so that's how you're able to identify it. So you see on Doppler, it won't be a consistent color because the pressure and the speed of the hepatic artery is changing rapidly. So it'll kind of flash between going bright red and then back to almost uh, dark blue, almost. You know, like it, the, you can think of your own pulse and you can see the, 
the speed of the blood changing quite quickly. And so that'll show up on the Doppler as a change in color. So if you really want to see it though, um, and, and confirm that you are seeing the hepatic artery, spectral Doppler is really helpful for that because you can, you can see the waveform very clearly. Unfortunately, the Butterfly IQ does not have spectral Doppler uh, functionality at the moment. Uh, they're currently developing it. So, you know, that's something that we'll be excited to talk about in the future. Uh, but if you really need a spectral Doppler measurement, you're gonna have to use a more traditional uh, ultrasound. But with, without further ado, I'll show you how to identify the hepatic artery with the Butterfly IQ here. So the dark red kind of consistent stuff, of course, is the portal vein. But the hepatic artery is this little flash right here. You see that? So you can see it flashing light blue intermittently, right? Right here. So that's part of the hepatic artery. Now just remember, it's much smaller, so it can kind of get uh, you know, lost in the mix with all the flow going on with the portal vein. But that's it right there. All right. So now let's put it all together and put all the vessels so we can make sure that we can tell them apart. There's portal vein right there, hepatic veins right there, and then hepatic artery right there. All right. It's a great little video because you're able to see them all and compare them. Let's play it again. Now, the reason you need to make sure that you can identify the hepatic vasculature and, and take proper measurements of it and know where it is, is uh, particularly for IR procedures because you know, if you're planning a TIPS procedure or something like that, you're going to be creating a small shunt between the hepatic vein and the portal vein. So it's really important to know where that is uh, or where your branches are and make sure there's no cysts in the middle or anything else that you might hit and cause a hemorrhage or something. So it's very important to, to know where your, your branches are and how close they are to each other and what the architecture around them looks like, right? All right, and then finally, uh, got an image of the gallbladder. So I've made a more uh, in-depth video about it, but we'll just go over it briefly here because it's an important part of the liver exam as well. So uh, first, you're just going to be taking some measurements of the gallbladder here. So the gallbladder is a cystic structure, so it's gonna appear dark here, right under the liver, in between the liver and, and this kind of bowel, uh, that's happening over here. So you can see the characteristic liver parenchymal architecture here and the bowel gas kind of getting in the way. And so that's why it can be challenging to image because sometimes the bowel can even get up in between you and the, the transducer and, and throw the gallbladder into shadow. But this is a great image here. You're able to kind of see the whole thing. Now remember the gallbladder, you know, it's it's an uh, elongated organ. It's this round on the transverse view and elongated. It looks like a banana or something like that. Uh, on the longitudinal view. And so you want to be able to get both measurements. So the transverse view is here, where it looks circular. And here you can measure the thickness of the wall. You want to make sure that it's three millimeters or less. And then you also want to be able to get a longitudinal measurement of it. And so you're going to have to turn the probe 90 degrees to be able to see the whole gallbladder coming into view like that. The length, and then you can measure the length of it from here to here. You want that to be less than about 10 centimeters. Uh, if it's more than that, you know, that can indicate distension or uh, inflammation. And then you're also looking into the lumen of the gallbladder. You want to make sure there's no stones, masses, sludge, anything like that. But all, a lot of that will be able to show up on a gallbladder uh, with, uh, with the proper image technique. All right. So let's review some of the abnormalities that we've talked about. So you want to look for any kind of lesions or abnormalities in the liver itself. Uh, you want to make sure that you're seeing it in two planes at least because sometimes you can have shadows or odd things showing up in one plane, but it's probably just artifactual. It's just a shadow uh, being cast or a reflection from other structures. So if you can see it in two planes though, it's probably a real physical structure. Um, the lesions can look like significant changes in echogenicity. So you might see a part of the liver architecture that's just very dark or very light, and, you know, and those are both important things to be able to to recognize and image and measure. And when you measure it, you should measure it in three planes if you can. Sometimes that's, that's not possible, but three planes is, is ideal. And then once again, you're gonna be looking at the, the capsular structure and distortions, because that can uh, clue you into some underlying distortions in the liver architecture. 
with the vasculature, uh, you want to see if there's any uh, flow that is different than you would expect. Sometimes you can have retrograde flow, uh, where the flow in the blood vessel at times is going in the opposite direction than you'd expect. So that would be an important thing to be able to recognize and probably characterize further with spectral Doppler. Uh, you're looking for kind of the echogenicity of the liver. So if the liver is hyperechoic, you know, that can indicate fatty liver. You're looking for uh, an enlarged portal vein, because uh, that can indicate portal hypertension. Uh, you can also see increased in collateral flow. So if you're seeing a lot of flow through uh, the umbilical vein, that can be an indication of portal hypertension as well, because usually you're not gonna see a lot of flow through there unless there's significant portal hypertension. You're also going to be looking for stones or inflammation or distension of the gallbladder. And then, of course, you're looking for any kind of fluid or effusions that shouldn't be there, whether that's in the lungs, heart, gallbladder, or around the liver itself. So all of those uh, places can develop effusions that you might see incidentally on, on liver ultrasound. All right, that's what we're looking for. Thank you for watching.